Okay, good morning and thank you for the opportunity to show you some of my experiments in the last uh, semester. Um, last year, uh, first year in particular, came into the degree without a real sense of uh, the profession that they were getting into and it was fairly obvious uh, as the year progressed. Um, I've always tended as first year advisor and a, with a real interest in first year to have a look at one of the things that we are not doing as well as we could and try and improve on that. And so I, I use Keithia Wilson's, um, I did a workshop with her a number of years ago in her first year in the higher education conference and there was some really interesting stuff in that. And she um, suggests that these are the things that first years need to be successful in their very first year. And I've sort of worked off that list to try and improve different things at different times. So the Academic Literacy Week um, program that we've run for the last couple of years and then the app that came out of trying to improve some of these things. So I had a look across all of that and thought what's one aspect that I can try and improve for this and particularly in light of first year coming in last year without a very strong sense of vocational direction and purpose. One of the things that I thought we could uh, try was to give them a better sense of what the design profession is all about. And towards that end I thought, oh well I'll, I'll have a look at iBooks, what can they offer? Um, in retrospect I won't use them again, but it was interesting to find that out by making one. So I'm just going to jump out of this, sorry, it's a bit fractured in this sort of... Uh, okay, so um, in making this iBook I wanted to include all sorts of um, different things but mostly uh, the experience of previous students. So. Using an iBook, we've, we've made this uh, iBook which I use in, in the very first semester, in the very first assignment. It's part of their first assignment in a unit which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment. And I won't, uh, uh, you can get a copy of this, I'm happy to share this with you if, if it's of any use to you or my experience around building it. But in this, um, what I wanted to do was to sort of give an industry perspective of what graphic design is all about, give links out to some of the key Australian design studios, so to get them looking at the industry that they're about to enter, giving them an idea of where they start off and where they can end up. Design is, is a rapidly evolving and expanding um, area. Um, so we'll also get them thinking about um, the future. I know when I started, uh, if you could write HTML, you had a job. Uh, by the time I finished, uh, that was no longer the case. You had to know 15 different technologies to get a job. So things will change in the four years that they're here. So I want them to start thinking about what those future directions are, are like. So. Um, you know, big data and some of those other ideas, starting to look at that. Okay, um, what associations they can belong to. This one always gets asked, how much will I be able to earn once I'm out there? And so showing them the, the sorts of uh, figures that they'll be looking at. But most of all, I wanted to show them how previous first years, what their journey was like. And so I've taken with the um, wonderful uh, cooperation of these five previous, uh, or these five graduates, having a look at their journey, and each of their journeys has been different. Some are, are stellar, uh, some have struggled. So I'm rushing, if I'm rushing through it, um, slow me down. I've seen it all before. <laughs> Um, so Josh Crowley, uh, for instance, was a fantastic student uh, right from the beginning, came in with a fairly strong sense of where he wanted to go and he's now just been um, 
Well, for a little while now, Digital Coordinator at Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Um, he jumped into everything he could while he was at uni, including uh, redesigning the, the student newspaper and all sorts of different things. Took on internships, even though that increased his workload. It, it gave him opportunities in the long run that he would never have had otherwise. Um, and I'll just play a tiny bit. My colleague Dan, for another unit, has been doing interviews with, um, coincidentally, some of the same students. Let's clap aboard. <laughs> Ready? There you go. Good to go. <laughs> Today I find myself in the ABC building in Baltimore, in Sydney, speaking with Josh Cloud, one of my favourite ex-students, I must say. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you from first year, Yeah, which is quite a thing to say, especially when it's been a number of years. Yeah. Um, so, tell me, who are you and what do you do? I'm Joshua Cloud, I work at the ABC, and I'm a digital coordinator in ABC Commercial. Um, and within ABC Commercial, I mean the Digital Business Unit, which is a unit um, that has a portfolio of digital products and apps, so iOS apps like mm -hmm. Artists in Pajamas, Bubble Time, and um, Beach Farm, and Say Cheese, and so we've also got a big app that we've just finished producing, um, and it's launched in October last year called ABC Active Memory, which is... Uh, Brain training program similar to luminosity. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it'll take up the whole fifteen minutes, so I'm going to move on. Um, but they're they're really interesting, and and uh, they they reflect on their time at university, um, the things that worked for them, the things that they got involved in that spurred their career on. Ty um, is a fantastic student. I remember her from first year. You know, every assignment she put in was as if she was designing a professional output for a client. It was just wonderful work from the beginning. She's just won a Sydney Design Award for her entry in Vivid Festival last year and she's working on some interesting new projects in that light. Um, but I've also included things. David uh, uh, was very interested in um, media production and video, uh, fantastic uh, video videographer, and he's done some of the um, work for Ty because it becomes a little community, so they start to help each other out in the industry once they're out there. And there's also a wonderful interview with, with um, Ty that's uh, also worth watching. Jesse, on the other hand, I wanted to explore for them, um, for first-year students, the possibilities. He went overseas to do an exchange to London um, and he's actually gone back there now and set up a design studio in London. Uh, so that exchange experience was, uh, gave him an international perspective, uh, gave him a uh, sense of what he could possibly achieve. He's, he's won for Australian AGDA, uh, Australian Graphic Design Association Awards, uh, while he was a student here. Um, Paul, on the other hand, he had a pretty pretty rough journey. He also did an exchange, but um, through health issues and things, it was a real struggle for him, and um, he, he sort of points that out in terms of where he's, he's gone. Also, all five of these guys have said they're happy to come back and talk to the first years about their experiences, which is, again, part of that network. Okay, and then the last section of the iBook is about what it will take for them to get there. Um, you know, what, is it, what does it take to become a good designer? And I've sort of taken three different ways of looking at it. Um, so this is what industry thinks, the things they uh, think a young designer needs. But then to contrast that with a couple of different uh, views about the complexity of design and how its importance is rising in solving some of the problems we face in the future. 
sorry, I'm rushing through that. Um, so that's the iBook, uh, but we introduced the unit and we introduced the uh, first um, assignment using that to give a sense of where they're going to go. I'll get through some of this. So that's the iBook. My second problem was how to put quality work in front of students when they would rather use Google than books. We have one of the best design libraries up there. I had a student come last year with about 18 books. She said, look what I found, I've discovered the library. Um, oh, I've been telling you for about a year now. But the trouble with Google, of course, is it's very random. What they are looking at is not controlled in the sense of is it high quality work, is it work, work which is relevant, etc. So this is where I'm using Pinterest um, uh, with great success. Um, so their first assignment, I wanted to move them away from I am a, des I'm a designer but I'm designing for myself, which is a little bit the attitude they come out of high school with. Most of them have visual arts backgrounds and they are their own client. I want them to start seeing that they have to design for somebody else. And so their first assignment is actually des developing a visual identity for a fellow classmate. So it puts them in designer-client relationship, which is tricky. So the first step is to get them looking at quality work. So on Pinterest I've actually developed a couple of boards specifically for this unit. And again, sorry, I'm just going to jump out quickly to them. I love Pinterest. It's a wonderful sort of picture posting um, thing, but you, you come across work that you would never see otherwise. So students are asked to follow my graphic design, not my drinks after five, but a few of them have. Um, my graphic design board and also the logos and brand identities which I've specifically made for the unit. So I'm wanting them to look at good visual identity development. I'm looking, getting them to look at logos and logo development. And a lot of my colleagues said, hey, that's second, third year work. And I thought, no, um, what could we do in first year if you put them in this situation? I also get them to, to give a more international perspective. Um, one chance uh, uh, pins some, he's got a beautiful eye, but he also comes across work in Asia that um, I can't get access to. And so it gives a more international perspective. And that, they're the two people they start to follow. And they use it then to liaise with their clients. So start to um, show them their work in progress as they're going along. Um, clients can give feedback. Clients can be pretty harsh at times. My client rejected my design for hers. I was devastated. So I was working with one student as well. She was designing for me and I was designing for her. He reckons it only took him 30 minutes. I suspect it took him a lot longer than that. So that's, that's how I'm using Pinterest to put good quality work in front of them to start getting them to look at it. The other uh, benefit of it is I can look back the other way. So I can actually start to see what their interests are. And so I can see, you know, for instance, students with a very strong il illustrative background and start to direct work in our next project to match where their strengths lie, start to look at where they may, may need to start to strengthen um, software skills or, or what drawing skills or whatever. So it allows me a view back into their world to some extent. Sorry, I know I'm running out of time. So I'm just going to jump back into the last one. And what I also got them to do was to build a LinkedIn. And they get marks for this. So it's the first assignment, so I can check whether they're engaged. So they get five marks for setting up a Pinterest account and a LinkedIn account. I've said use LinkedIn because business still look, uh, uses LinkedIn to a great degree. A lot of the students prefer to use the loop because you can embed a portfolio on, on the loop, whereas you can't on LinkedIn. You have to link out to your own portfolio. Um, they haven't got a lot they can put in there yet, but at the end of this assignment, and we are going to refine it further, they can put their first assignment up there as part of their portfolio. So they're starting to build a professional profile out there. Okay, uh, here's some of the work. Now, they can use this um, to apply for internships. I know one student who, who's already got an internship at a printing company based on his visual identity. He sent it off in that it's, it becomes fairly impressive if you can 
uh, do it right from the beginning. So here's some of the results now. Of course I'm showing you some of the better ones, but some of the not so good ones we know where we have to work and next week we're going to spend refining those. So we're going back to the same assignment and refining it uh, for a final time. So they had to uh, develop a logo uh, or a logo type, um, codify it and then also apply it to a range of, we said look, could be anything. So some people did quite a range of things including t-shirts and all sorts of stuff, others just did stationery once they found out what a letter and a letterhead was. Some of them, I'm not joking, some of them did not know what that was. And this is first year, first assignment work. So, I mean, you know, I was, I was blown away by the quality of it. One of the clues to that it's working, I had nearly 100% attendance for the first seven weeks. They were keen to be there and to be talking to each other. Couldn't shut them up, you know. In fact, I had to ban clients from talking to designers because they kept interfering with the design process. No, I want stars on it, and I want blue here, and I want this there. Um, so you do have to interfere in the end to sort of say, no, look, get on with it now. And that's how I'm using it. Thank you.